All right. So as we get closer to uh, Shavuos and Matan Torah, I thought this was an interesting question, right? Who does Torah belong to? So we'll start with the Gemara Chagiga. It says, Ve'amar Rabbi Ami ein mosrin divrei Torah legoi, shene'amar lo asachin lechogoi umishpatim ba yudaum. And the next uh, source is the actual, like the full Pasuk. Uh, it's a Pasuk we say every morning in Sukkot de Zimra. It says, is Magi Dvarav li Yaakov, Chukov umishpatav li Soel. So meaning that we should be teaching Torah to Yaakov, meaning, you know, B'nai Yisrael, meaning everyone in, 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 the, um, in the Jewish people. The Chukim umishpatim. Lo asachin the Chogoi, but not to those who are not Jewish. Umishpatim ba yudaum. And even you know, the mishpatim, they should not be made known of, right? They, they should not be taught. So um, Tosfus over there talks, uh, says, in Mosrin divrei Torah le'ovet kochavim, right? It's it's interesting language that Rabbi Ami says in Chagi, it says, in Mosrin, not in Malamdim or, or something like that. So let's see where Tosfus goes with this with this question. He says, Hayakasha Rabbeinu Yachonon, Tipukle de overkochavim haosik betora, chayv misa. Ked omer be the perak dalad misos. Overkochavim haosik betora, chayv misa. Velam vehamilamdo over alifne iver lo site So Tosus has a question. We have, this, we have our Gemara in Chagiga that says you shouldn't teach uh, Torah to a non Jew. How do I know this? And they and our Gemara cites a um, a pasuk um, in Tehillim. So Tosfos asks, "Well, wait a second. What's going on? We have a beferish Gemara in Sanhedrin that says that any Ovid kochavim." And and by the way, um, you know, when you know, my understanding is that any time the Gemara says Ovid kochavim, it does. It's it's lav davka. Um, that's a, I think, a byproduct of the censors from centuries ago, where the Christians took offense when we would talk about, you know, the Christians, uh, non-Jews, that sort of thing. So all of those, anytime, you know, it's really like the search and replace function. Um, anytime it said non-Jew, the censors put in over kochavim. So it's not specifically idol worshippers or, um, you know, specific types of non-Jews. What we're talking about is non-Jews in general. So Tosfos asks, why are you bringing um, a pasuk from Tehillim? We don't we don't paskin halacha. We don't we don't create halacha. So we don't learn out mitzvos from nach. A nach can be in a smachta. Can it can help us understand um, either a something from the Torah or it can help um, justify why we have a rabbinic decree. But we don't learn. Um, certainly, you know this would be rabbinic at, at the most. In this gemar chakiga. Uh, but we have a beferish gemara in Sanhedrin that says an over kochavim maosik b'torah chayiv misa. Any non-Jew who 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 studies Torah is chayiv misa, and that's and why, because it says velam um, over al lifne iver lo siten mechshol. So this is already at a deraisa level when we when we talk about lifne iver lo siten mechshol. Right, that's a beferish um, pasuk um, that we just saw a couple of weeks ago in the parsha. So. Um, here we have a derisa level of you cannot teach Torah to to uh, to the Ovdei Kochav and the non-Jews. What's going on in Chagiga? Um, so he says, "Vechi tema b'zayin mitzvahs didu." And so we might think, well, maybe what we're talking about over here is the the Sheva mitzvahs b'nei Noach. Right? We know that every non-Jew also has their mitzvahs. The 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 Sheva mitzvahs b'nei Noach that they have to abide by. They no chayiv misa. There, there no, there be no chayiv misa. They certainly have to learn what those Zion mitzvahs are and how to um, and how to perform them. Gedorim Marshas Hosam. That's also in Sanhedrin that we talk about those, the Sheva mitzvahs. But mitzvah ika lemostrom lahem. And certainly that would be a mitzvah for a Jew to teach the um, the non-Jew what those Sheva mitzvahs are and uh, what their responsibilities are. And there's a pasuk that says, right? V'chay bahem. It says ha'adam v'chay bahem, not not a Jew, meaning that <clears throat> the mitzvahs are meant to be, you know, life giving, not 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 to cause us, you know, any any you know death or or any other problems. Chas v'shalom. So clearly, 
um, you know, that, that's just a, a, a support to this idea that a non-Jew can certainly study Torah, at least Lagabe, the, the Shiva Mitzvah ben Noach, that they have to uh, perform. So, okay. So we have, so that's Tarsus's Kasha. Tarsus's Kasha is why, what's going on in Chagiga? We, what's that adding? We already have a Gemara in Sanhedrin that tells us that you can't teach Torah to a non Jew. So he says, So it could be a situation where you don't have a problem of Lifna Ever. And we're going to, uh, dive into this for a moment to understand this a little bit better. So let's talk about this. This gemara uh, is an interesting idea, uh, or I guess part of the halacha. The halachos of Lifna Iver. So the Gemara Navarazar describes that <clears throat> you have a Nazir on one side of the river, and you have um, someone else, a, a friend of his, is on the other side of the river that has that has wine. Now, Nazir is not allowed to drink wine, right? During his time of Naziris, he cannot partake in wine. So the uh, the the um, the situation, the scenario is on his side of the river, he has no ability. There's no wine; it doesn't exist. And it's only if you are going to like sort of hand that cup over to him across the river that he'll be able to get wine. In that case, you are over, you yourself are over on Lifne Iver, La Cite and Michel, because that Nazar had no other ability to get it. So that's a situation that where we talk about Lifne Iver is um, when, you know, when are you going to sort of fall under the trap of Lifne Iver? It's only when the person that uh, would be the, you know, th that you're, I guess aiding and abetting, right? In their, in their, whatever it is that they're doing, um, wouldn't have the ability to do so without your help. So, if you have a situation where you're giving it to them, like let's say you know all you're doing is they're on the same side of the river as you are, all you're doing is putting it on a table for them and they can take it. But the truth is, it was sitting right, it was t sitting ten feet away anyway. They could have just walked up and taken it. Then in that case, you wouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be on over uh, on leaf naiver on losi ten mechshol. So Tosa says, maybe that's the situation here. We know that there's a problem of leaf naiver, and that's going to be the problem that's talked about in Sanhedrin, that we can't teach a guy um, Torah. But what happens if you have a situation where there's no leaf naiver? So, so he says, hachanami, in, in our case, meaning by Chagiga, I feel that makam over kochavim acher, rotze lando, de leka leaf naiver. What happens if you, had, let's say you have a non-Jew who's going to teach him? Or in, in the cases, this is Tosh was talking, this is a thousand years ago, let's talk about today. Today, any non-Jew can go to Amazon and buy a Gemara, all right? Or buy, right, you can buy anything online. They don't know if they're selling it to a non-Jew, to a Jew, Amazon wouldn't care anyway. So is there a problem, I mean, not, not trying to posk in here, but, you know, if that availability <clears throat> is that they can study Torah without you, there may not, you know, there's no situation, there's no problem of leaf naiver. So, um, so the lake leaf naiver, mikamakam, asr mishu, magi devar of the Yaakov echule. So Tosha says that's why we need the Gemara in Chagiga, that even in a situation where you don't have leaf naiver problems, still we have a pasuk that says um, that umishpatim uh, ba'al um, that you still should not be teaching them mishpatim meaning that you shouldn't be teaching them Torah, and that's going to be at a rabbinic level, a drabanan. Okay, so that's how, how Tezvaz understands it. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the Maharsha in his Chidush uh, Yagados. He says, Ein most written divrei Torah la'ovdei kochavim. So there's lo ka'amar ein melamdim Torah la'ovdei kochavim. Dohavare v'zayim mitzvahs ditu melamdim oso. So, he uh, is also bothered by this uh, by this problem of why does it say in Mosrin <clears throat> as opposed to in Malamdim um, in in the Gemara Chagia, right? You shouldn't hand over, you shouldn't transfer, or um, you know that that's idea as opposed to you shouldn't be teaching them. So he says because if regarding the, the Shiva Mitzvahs B'nai Noach um, Avada that you can be teaching them those 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 mitzvahs that they have. 
So Malamdi Mosav Shar Mitzvah Satora over Kochavim Halomid Osa Chayev Binafsho. But anything else outside of that realm, outside of that small subset, uh, you can't be teaching. So, but a most is teaching me something even more, the, uh, so it says the Maharsha, that even within the Zion mitzvahs, when we think about all the mitzvahs that we have, right, we talked about this over the last couple of weeks, think about the parties, the parties within the parties, there's so much that you can be learning and understanding about all the separate uh, mishpatim within each mitzvah. So when we think about like Gezel, they also have, non-Jews also have a mitzvah, it's one of the Sheva mitzvahs, B'nai Noach is, is not to be a Gazlan. Um, but Gazela is a huge parsha. There's a lot to study, there's a lot to learn, and there's also all of the sodos, right? All the, all the hidden components. All of that is off limits. They should understand and un, you know know on a day to day basis how to conduct themselves and not be over on on you know being a, a goslan, but beyond that, no. And that's why he says a mosrit because you can't go you can't go beyond just what they you know the the bare minimum of what they need to know in order to conduct themselves properly. So, does a mosrit in the ham sodim the tamen valzeh maisi le mikra dechzev magi devar of the Yaakov. Like when we're talking about teaching Jews, then we have to teach them all of the chukim mishpatim, all the components of, of all of the mitzvahs. But not to the to the non-Jew. All of the things that they have to be doing to conduct themselves, the proper etiquette and such within those mitzvahs, that they have to know. <coughs> This is, this is also going to help, you know, um, answer Tosu's question, why do we need this separate Pasuk? Because well, what this is also teaching us is that even within, again, if, even within the realm of what we're allowed to teach them, um, we're still limited. We're still limiting ourselves and saying, you have to draw the line and not teach them beyond um you know, beyond the, the, the basic practical aspects um, of Torah. So that's uh, one aspect of, you know, uh, of who does Torah belong to? If we, so we understand now that there's this Gedorim set up of what we're allowed to learn beyond what, what we are as, as, uh, as B'nai Yisrael have to learn versus what non-Jews are allowed uh, to learn what we're allowed to teach them. And we learned that out, we saw from those two psukim, or from, I should say, from Leif Na'ivir and from, um, the Pasuk in Tehillim, but we have a separate Gemara as well in Sadhedron. It says, Rabbi Yochanan, over betorah misa. Similar idea to what we saw in Sanhedrin, that if a uh, non-Jew is studying Torah, they are chayv misa. Shnei amar Torah tziva lanu Moshe, marasha lanu, uh, lanu marasha v'lo lahem. So the Pasuk says, Torah tziva lanu Moshe, marasha kihilas Yaakov that it is a morasha, it is some form of inheritance, right? It's, it's, it belongs to the heritage that belongs to uh, Kehilas Yaakov. Um, and the Gemara and Sanhedrin darshans out, morasha means, because it's siva lanu, lanu morasha v'lo lahem. So now we have another pasuk that, that helps us understand or helps teach us <clears throat> the same concept. So we have it in a few different places that over uh, Kochavin that non-Jews are not allowed to learn Torah. So let's, uh, what I wanted to do now is maybe switch gears a little bit and look at this idea of Morashak Hilas Yaakov. So the Ksava HaKabola uh, says Morasha. So he says, Lo Amar Yerusha, Kamosha Kosovar, Nu Shebe Emes Ein HaTorah Yerusha. This is an interesting diuk here. <clears throat> Why didn't it say, right, the, the normal way of talking about an inheritance, when we talk about like an inheritance of land um, or, you know, karka or metotlin, we talk about a Yerusha and the people who are um, inheriting are the Yorshim, right? That's the typical way that we see it in the Mishnayos and the Gemara. So why does a Pesach call it a Morasha and not a Yerusha? So the, the, the Ksava Kabbalah says, this is not a Yerusha. Um, um, 
um, as Chazal tell us, that you have to prepare yourself to learn Torah. It's not a Yerusha. It's simply not handed down. It's not given to you in a silver platter. Uh, right? In a situation where you have um, a typical case where you have a, an inheritance and you have the um, the children, the the you know, right, the, the, those who are inheriting, um, it's simply and there's nobody complaining, right? There's nobody going to based it and saying no, 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 no. There was a you know there, there was some other thing. I, I I should be inheriting this or whatever it is, right? There's a, I have a star, I, I have something that some kind of proof that says that I I'm the owner of this um, land or whatever. You don't have any of that. The Yerusha goes directly to the Yorshim. So the Kabbalah says that in this case, it's as if you are a Yorish, but you have a Yorish with Orim, people who are complaining, people who are saying, no, 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 you don't get it. Who is that? That's the Yitzhahara. So it's the metaphor that he's using is that it's not, you know, it's not a simple case of simply inheriting it. Um, we have to work for it. It doesn't just come to us. Um, you know, through based in sort of handing over the deed uh, to the land to us or the deed to Torah to us, we have to work for it. And unless you really work hard at it, you 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 won't you know you won't get that 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 portion of Torah. The memches devarim Torah niknes. Right, we we've seen this before in Perkiavos, the forty-eight ways um, that you can acquire Torah. This is right? You have to um, decrease uh, conversations, uh, decrease sleep, um, decrease uh, how much you work versus how much you you know you learn. Um, the schok and and playtime. Right? There's certain things you have to do in order to to acquire Torah. It doesn't just come. So he also connects, it's interesting, the other place that we see the term morasha being used um, is in Parsha's Va'era, right? We saw this before Pesach in the puzzle which says Ve'hei and it talks about a Baruch taking us out and bringing us to Eretz Yisrael. It refers to Eretz Yisrael also as a morasha. So Eretz Yisrael is also considered this. What that means is that it is ours, meaning to Kehilas Yaakov, to Bnei Yisrael, it is ours forever and ever. That land that we had to uh, fight for, you know, that we had to, um, uh, uh, you know, Made, wage war against the the Sheva Amamim, right? The, the the seven nations that were there that Yahushua wages war with. That we have to do. Once we do that, Eretz Yisrael becomes ours forever, um, at least to Kehilas Yaakov. And that's the idea. Is that on a? I think what he's saying is that on a global level. Um, it is a morasha. That's what morasha means, is that it's not necessarily for us as individuals. We don't um, automatically get a portion of Torah or perhaps even a portion of Eretz Yisrael. It takes work. It takes effort um, for us to be considered to be part of Kehilas Yaakov that gets, that gets the morasha. So the morasha goes, definitely stays within the Jewish people forever and ever, but we as individuals, we have to work for it. And that's the difference between a Marasha and a Yerusha. And he points out that again, it's Kehilas Yaakov, it's not for anybody else. Um, you have to be part of the bris of Avram, so clearly, if you were to convert, right, going back to non-Jews, once they convert to Vada, they have a, a chilek also um, in the Torah and in Eretz Yisrael. But until they do so, they they don't have a portion. Um, that olam tihi levad le Torah Yisrael v'nisayim meidah she 
Ad Hayom Lo Haisa Uma Velashen Shabricha Terasin of the Kabel Alav Om Mitzvos Zulas Kilas Yaakov. And what makes us different is that Kilas Yaakov has accepted upon ourselves the all of right, the yoke of mitzvos. Okay. So that's the Ksava Kabbalah explaining to us what does it mean, Marasha Kihilas Yaakov. That it's a Marasha for Kihilas Yaakov, but we as individuals, uh, we have to work for it. Jeff, there, yeah. there's one other difference, and that is nobody has to die to, for you to get the Torah, like right. a normal Yerusha. Right. Yeah, that's a good point, right? That, that's, that, that's certainly a good point, is that as opposed to a Yerusha where the, the previous owner dies, and then... Um, his right, his his relatives then inherit from him, and that's true. That that's another good point. Is that it's not about that. It's just um, it goes down the generations, uh, regardless. Um, it it's 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 holistic, right? It it doesn't. Uh, um, it's not something that that uh, divides up or ha- needs to be divided up. That's a good point. So I wanted to finish with the shla, the shnei luchos abris. Again, we're taking a little bit of a turn here, <clears throat> but again, just in terms of looking at. Um, Matan Torah and, and preparing ourselves for Shavuos. Um, he he has uh, an interesting um, some some insights. I think are just really really well you know um, good to understand um, as we as we learn the sugya. So he says the inin no sinatora. The question that he um, just to take a step back. The question that the Shla wants to answer is when we make uh, birchas Torah, right? When we say birchas Torah every morning, and the brach itself is. Baruch Hashem, Nasein HaTorah. So a question that, that many ask, um, and the Shla is getting into this, is what does it mean, present tense, that he's giving us the Torah? And he gave us the Torah. He gave us the Torah on Har Sinai. So what does it mean, Nasein HaTorah, uh, present tense? So it says, Be'emes, Hashem is Baruch Kvar Nidna. Avada, we all understand that it was given to us, in, you know, to our previous generations on Har Sinai. Aval, but we also understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is continuing to give us Torah without ceasing, without, uh, without any stoppage. But this requires a lot of explanation. So there's a Pasuk Omer. So this is a puzzle in Devarim, but it's referring back to Har Sinai. And it talks about, right, the, the mountain and the cloud and the smoke and, you know, the whole scene of Har Sinai. And it says, Kol Gador, right, the shofar was blowing, Velo Yasaf. So it was a great blast of the shofar. Um, and, you know, it's typically when, when we hear the shofar like at Rosh Hashanah, it starts loud and it tapers off, right? Because at some point you you run out of oxygen in your lungs and, and the sound is going to taper off. So Perish Rashi, Velo, what does it mean, Velo Yasaf? So Matar Gaminan, Velo Pasak. So Rashi quotes um, Unklos there, who, who translates Velo Yasaf as Velo Pasak. It didn't, it never stopped. So unlike a Basar Vadam who is going to be blowing shofar and the sound tapers off, and of course, Baruch Hu was blowing, you know, was creating the sound of the shofar at Har Sinai. It was just a steady, you know, loud um, blast that never stopped. Kikolo chazak v'kayim la'olam. It was a strong sound, and it lasts forever. I suppose, you know, um, I think I've seen this in the in the in these works of the Chassid, you know, the Chassid Shereb is that, you know, today it's still going on. It's just a matter of whether we have the ears to hear it. But, you know, that 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 call of the shofar never stopped. Okay. Davar Acher, but this is still in Rashi, lo yasaf, lo hosif, laharos ba'oso pumbi adkon lashono. But, the, uh, you know, on the other on the other hand, lo yasaf can mean that it doesn't continue. It stops. It does stop. <clears throat> that um, we will not again um, see, you know, that revelation that we that Bnei Yisrael saw on Har Sinai. That, you know, was 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 a one-time phenomenon. So the Shlach says, "Yesh b'zeh ha'inyan sod kamus." He said, "This is a very, um, you know, this is api sod, and this is a, a hidden idea." The hashnei perushim kulam hememes, and the truth is, he says, both explanations are true. They're both true, even though they are contradictory. They're both true. 
Indian lo yasaf lo hosif, that it, the idea that it doesn't, it didn't continue. Who mitzvahs the rabbanan? Bechamurasan heim v'saygehen adayin lo nistavu mi piyagvura. There's no idea that, or it doesn't exist that that uh, the um, all of the xeris, all of this, um, all of the sayag that that the rabbanan have put in place, that they were in addition to the Torah that they were handed out later. He says no, all of that also came from Har Sinai. It's simply at that moment in time it wasn't uh, it wasn't mitzuva mipiagvura. So we didn't hear it at Har Sinai. But that was all encompassed within the Torah that was given at Har Sinai. So there's nothing to add from there. The Indian lo pasak, but when we talk about the fact that it never ends, perush shavze lo pasak meakohahu. But even this doesn't um, it doesn't stop from that sound, from that blast that was going on that still continues on Har Sinai. Ki haya kolu bekol hahu bekoach, because in potential. All of those gazeras, everything that comes down that we call rabbinic law from the time of Harsina to, to, to today was included in that, at least in potential. But it isn't realized until it's, I guess, until it's needed. And that's all up to us um, down here on earth. Um, what we are able to uncover and, and develop within Torah, lefi muhusam echosam. That's you know the the quality of the of the um, of the study of Torah that we're able to do. Lefi madregos neshama shabechod dar and what we're able, what we as neshamos are able to accomplish in every generation. Vaz hosifu hachachamim lisar hakovah chayadim yisur lepo bezmano vedaito, and that's why you know over the generations, over the uh, centuries. Chachamim have been able to awaken this potential within Torah and be able to say, okay, here's the, you know, here's Psak Din today, here's the new Gzera today that we need to have in order to continue. This is what we need. They were able to do that again from the Koach of Harsinai, but they brought it to realization through, you know, what they're able to accomplish. We can't say that Chasvashalam, that any, that even the Chachamim were, you know, sort of creating these ideas from their own das, from their own opinions, from their own mind. Rak kivunu nas elyon. Rather, they're able to connect with the das elyon. Because we are all, all of our nishamos, we're, we're at Har Sinai. We all received the Torah at Har Sinai. And now, at this point, once, you know, as we go through the, the centuries, now we have the ability through our own toil in Torah to be able to bring this to fruition. And that's what it means, that it all stems from uh, our presence and what we received at Har Sinai, but uh, then to be able to bring it into realization, that's what, uh, that's what the Chachamim were able to do over the centuries. And he says, Remez ledavar midrabanan ola mipiagvura. He says, uh, interesting remez, again, remember the remez from last week, that we're talking about gematria as a remez. So the gematria of Midrabanan and the gematria of Mipi Agvura both equal 346. Right, so anything Midrabanan, it, he's saying that there's an equivalence, right? There, there's a connection that anything Midrabanan came from Mipi Agvura. Um, I, uh, I heard once, uh, um, I mean, pointed out that Moshe Rabbeinu, by the way, so Moshe is Gematria of 345. So it's, a, it's an interesting idea too that, uh, that you know, right, sort of right in that Parsha there of Midra, Banan Mikpia Gvura. All right. So, and he, and he continues, and we'll just go, we're, we'll finish up in just a minute. Um, but what he does in the second, in his next paragraph, and he says, Be'ele Shemas Rabba, Me'bina Shilam Yilam Dendu, so he quotes the same idea that, um, bringing down again, this isn't his, his own idea, this is uh, from the Medrash, but all of the Nevim were also at Harsinai, and all of the different prophecies that they had came from Harsinai. It's just that they weren't allowed to prophesy them until it was the right time. 
But all of Nivua comes from Har Sinai as well. It was all part of that revelation of Har Sinai. And it only, you know, it gets stored up, I suppose, until the right moment. And that's when the Nivua was allowed to be told to the people. So that, that's what he talks about in this, uh, in, in, in this next paragraph. Um, and later, in, throughout uh, a little bit further down, he'll start to get into Vasein Chalkeinu. What does it mean when we talk about in Davening, Vasein Chalkeinu B'Sorosach? We ask Hashem to give us our portion in Torah. Um, so I think maybe we'll try to delve into that aspect next week um, as like the final piece right before Shavuos.